this is going to be a review of the Nokia 1100 in 2022. So the reason I thought I'd make this is just because, well, first it's interesting seeing how a phone made from 2003 holds up in a, almost two decades later, and secondly, I kind of feel like it still holds its own um, when you consider the competition. So then, first thing to do, I want to have a show of how actual, how, actually how big it is. So I've got a ruler. I will we can actually measure it see how big it is so that is about 10 centimeters in length and about three and a half centimeters in width and if I were to actually stand this up as well if I can stand it That is about one centimetre thick. So it's quite small then. So next thing I'm going to do is just take it apart, see what's actually inside. So I take it apart on the back. You've got a little button on this case. I actually need two hands to do this potentially. Let's see if I can do it with one. I'm actually there with one hand. So take it off, and in inside here you have the BL5 battery, so BL5C battery even. Take that out, and then back in here you have the SIM card which is being held in by a little metal restrainer. So this is a full size SIM card. Again, this phone came out in 2003. And you also have a data connection connector here, which is what um, people used to use to actually connect the phone to a computer. So you could program it using a special programming cable. So they don't make these anymore. I mean, this is ancient technology now because all the phones tend to have USB connectors. Again, this actually has a barrel charger connector, which you can see here, and a tiny not standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack it's a smaller type i can't actually remember the size but and then you have the microphone as well so this is just a sort of physical look at the phone you also have the torch on here um and now we'll dive into the features in a minute right then before we go any further the, the other reason I wanted to make this review is just because other dumb phones that are out there at the moment, you might think AGM M6, Punked MP02 and the Light Phone, those are all sort of advertised as a standard phone that just does calling and SMS, but even the cheapest of those, the M6, is about £80, Whereas you can get a Nokia 1100 for about £20 on eBay, so it's a fifth of the price. And I mean, we'll go over what it lacks and what it might have over some of those other phones, but I mean, just based on the price alone, it's quite a big difference. So then, firstly, let's turn it on. You have to just hold down the power button, and you see the display comes to life, get the Nokia logo. There you go, so you get to see the time of day, network it's connected to, network strength, and the battery. So first thing to note about this phone then, it's a 2G only phone. So you have different types of network connectivity for cellular phones. Um, in this day and age where I'm recording this video at least, 2021, you have 2G, 3G, 4G and then 5G which is the very newest one. Give a bit of basic understanding, 2G networks are basically just for texting and phone calls, 3G text and phone calls and very slow data so that is internet browsing, 4G is more reasonable data speeds for internet browsing and then 5G is texting, calling and super fast internet speeds. So, again, this phone came out in 2003, which was just when 3G was being deployed, so it's a 2G only phone, I mean, it doesn't really need any more than that because it doesn't really have an internet browser, so... 
So the reason that that's important is because the networks are phasing out 2G and 3G over the next few years. So 3G is planned to be phased out in 2023 according to various sources that I've seen. Um, 2G is actually going to be around a bit longer though and there's a few reasons for that. Firstly, because the data speeds are lower, this is basically how electromagnetic communication works, but to put it simply, the lower the data speeds, the further you can cover an area with one antenna. So 2G networks need nowhere near as many cell towers as, say, a 4G or a 3G network. And for that reason, and also a few other reasons, such as smart meters in the UK relying on 2G, there's a few sort of spanners in the works with them trying to um, phase it out. <clears throat> but it is still worth mentioning. Um, so some articles I've seen say 2025 might be when they switch off 2G according to say EE and Vodafone but then O2 I haven't actually seen any dates for O2 so they could be a lot longer. The government's official date for switching it off is 2033 which is still just over 10 years so considering they're still selling 2G phones brand new as well you think like a Doro phone a lot of them are just 2G I can't imagine them planning to switch off the entire network anytime soon still because you would think they would stop selling 2G only devices uh, quite a while before that point so then on to the actual review of the phone firstly pros it's extremely durable so, just like a Nokia 3310, this thing can take a beating. I've had it in rainstorms, and I mean, you, you know the sort of meme of the Nokia 3310 being Thor's hammer. And yeah, it, it was, it's built to last. So, I mean, yeah, over almost 20 years, it's still going. I mean, the only thing that's have like threatening it to stop working is the cell carriers going to be switched off before this phone got, um, dies, so yeah. <clears throat> Other benefit that most people don't tend to mention, but it's quite a significant thing, is the screen's always on. So you notice it's a monochrome L L LCD display. So most um, modern phones, smartphones and even feature phones, they have um, colour displays, but you have to constantly be pressing a button for it to have the, the screen showing anything on it. Whereas this one, sure you can um, get to display up in the green backlight, but even without the backlight you can still see what's going on on the display. And only e-ink displays can really compete with that, so that's what the Light Phone 2 might have, but again you think the price difference, a Light Phone is over £200 as far as I remember. Whereas again, this is 20 quid, so a tenth of the price or even less so yeah um the standby time for this is absolutely insane as well in terms of the battery life so this is half battery i mean i don't have this on much but i last recharged this probably over half a year ago and it's at half battery because even smartphone batteries will discharge over time but this battery in this phone just seems to keep going and going yeah, <laughs> um, and the other benefit with that is it's got the BL5C battery but made by Nokia and that's a very common battery used in a lot of different Nokia phones. So even today, if you search for a BL5C battery online, you can find them on Amazon for about 12 quid. So, yeah, that's good. So another benefit then is the minimalistic interface. So if I actually browse around here you can see this is a very simplistic interface you've I can click into the menu you get a list of options and that's it so it's not like you're gonna get lost in it like uh, say um, some technophobe old people might I mean I'm just being stereotypical here but I mean we a lot of people may know someone that's a technophobe and uh, even now might uh, fret when they think about a smartphone or using one. <clears throat> Other benefit, um, predicted text is extremely accurate as far as I'm um, from my experience so um, I'll just think of a message to type and then I'll, I'll sort of show you how accurate it is. 
Okay, I'll type the fox jumps over the lazy dog. So here we go. I'd have to try and type while having this on camera. Oh, that's, there we go. See, so it only got one le one word that wasn't quite right, so I had to correct that. You can correct it by pressing this button here, which will change. So you can see it's just changed between all possibilities when I click it every time. Um, so then, that's... Uh, that's useful. Um, when you send a text, it will just send it. Um, it will give you a confirmation once it's sent. It will give you like a tick notification. Um, this is a pay-as-you-go SIM, so then it will also tell you your balance once you send a text. So, in fact, let me send a text as well, and you can see what happens. Okay, just sending the, the message now. So. So it will tell me what balance I have left because this is a pairs you go sim and in a minute I should get a response. And this is the benefit of having an always on display because if you're on the standard smartphone or even a, another dumb phone but there you go so message received but if you were to not hear that beep for whatever reason say you weren't in the room um, well, the benefit in this is it has one message received on this display even after the beep. So, whenever you look over it, it's already it's still saying it. One message received. It will keep on saying that until you look at it. And so, yeah, you get the the little envelope as well in the corner when you get an unread text message. So. Right, on to the next feature. So another pro then is that reminders are very easy to set. So if I go up the menu, you can see there's a special one just for reminders. Add a new one, you can just type whatever you want. So I'll just put test. Set the alarm on. So alarm on just means it will make a noise when the time happens. Set the date and set the hour. So if I set it for... 17.46 since it's only 14.5 now oh and it's already going off and there you go it would actually have made the beep except I think it sort of glitched out because I was already in the menu um, and yeah the reminder comes up it's right on the screen I can either press the middle button to make it snooze for 10 minutes or I press C to clear it um, so the other thing is alarms, which are very similar to reminders. Um, they're extremely loud, and uh, let me uh, show just how loud it actually is. I've just adjusted the alarm to try and make it... I think I might have glitched that out as well, a bit like I did with the reminder. So let us see if the alarm goes off. There you go. So you can actually customise this even more by making it vibrate, which will make it extremely loud if it's on a wooden surface. So I haven't done that. Get the nice little animation of a bell as well. So and again, you can either press the middle button to make it snooze or clear it. So just a few more things then. So Again, it's very small, as we me measured in the beginning, and it's got a nice weight to it as well, so it, it does feel sort of not heavy, but again, it's it doesn't feel like it's paper weight, like paper light even, either. Like, you, you do know you're holding it, it's not like you're holding a piece of paper. Um, and just a few sort of features that I found quite cool as well. Um, 
So you got the classic games, I mean everyone's covered these, Snake 2, Space Impact. Um, the other thing people don't seem to mention quite as much though is the composer. In extras, I mean you have the standard stopwatch timers, but you actually have a composer, so I mean these flashlight. I mean this is pretty much standard on all phones, so I'm not really going to go into that too much. Um, but the composer, you can actually create your own ringtone here, so... You, it has a proper customizable tune, so I mean I even made a, I even made one, so I mean let's play this. Yeah, I wonder who that is. I wonder if that's uh, Mr. Cena. Um, so, yeah, I mean it's the composer itself. You can have quite a bit of fun with that. I mean it's got a 50 note limit, and uh, that's you can do quite a bit with that. So that's pretty much the highlights for me. So as for the cons then, I mean there aren't that many cons to be honest, considering it's a £20 phone and it, it's like there's even the the small 2G phones such as the, the Zanko Tiny T1 which is a ridiculously small phone, it's not really usable, it's £50. This is £20 and it's actually usable. So the drawbacks then, there isn't a camera Again, it's just a really standard phone. There isn't a loudspeaker either, which can be annoying because you have to really hold it up to your ear or you just can't hear anyone. There is no option to put it on loudspeaker. And uh, an obvious one, no internet capability. It's a 2G phone. There is no internet browser. Um, one other thing, which is, again, there is no USB connection on it. It's just a barrel charger. So... Again, the charger plugs into that port there. Um, Non-standard headphone jack, but again, you don't really use headphones in this thing. There's no music playing capability, and then you just have a tiny microphone. So, yeah, the main reason I mentioned no USB is because pretty much every man and his dog has a USB cable nowadays. Where So, if a smartphone has a USB charger, you're probably going to have a cable to charge it with. Not so for this you have to get a, a separate type of charger and most people won't have one. But again, you only need one charger and then uh, a charge tends to last you about two weeks if you have it on that time. I mean, sometimes you might turn it off and then it can last you a long, long time. So, yeah, I mean, final verdict then. Um, as the age I was saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I mean, there isn't really much wrong with this phone, really. Um, it's got the unique benefit of an always on display, which most people will have forgotten the luxury of because smartphones killed the always on display. And I mean, e ink's making a bit of a recovery of it, but it's still not there yet. Um, it's small as well. There's very few phones that are this small, and it's quite nice because you can just store it in so many more places. Um, it's a lot like Nokia 3310, in fact it's almost identical in terms of features, the only difference is this is smaller, which is more useful I'd say. So Nokia, if you're watching, make this phone again, just put a 4G modem in it and I would buy it straight away because this is what I want for a backup phone. Like, I mean, for some people this might be fine for a main phone, but again for someone like me, I... There's too many useful features of a smartphone for it to be a main one for me. I mean, other people may vary though, but yeah. Stuff like WhatsApp, I mean, various people I know use it, so it's just uh, more of a pain if I can't use that sort of stuff. But no, as a backup phone, I definitely recommend this because, again, it's just a good price point, and it does most of the stuff that the modern competitors in the dumb phone category can do. It's just much more economically friendly. So yeah, I mean, if that's the sort of position you're in, you're looking for a basic phone, I mean, sure, it doesn't support 4G, so eventually it won't work, but again, I can't see that happening for at least three years, and if it's on O2, it will probably be even longer, since I haven't heard any sort of date from O2. And again, it could be as long as 2033, but probably more like 2030, slightly before. But I'd still say there's a good five years or more in it. And for £20, that's not bad going. So yeah, hopefully you found this um, enjoyable. You might have learned a few things, potentially. And yeah.